do you did the pairs get easier for you when Pete and Andy stopped? Because your your rivalry, I know you beat them every time, but you know it was kind of it was either one either one or the other was going to win. And and yeah. in terms in terms of you know when the event changed in 2012 when they went out, did it did it get easier for you did, or? Uh, it did it did a little bit, but it, we didn't take. I think if we hadn't had the mentality that we had from that 2011 year where it was just like, go as hard as you can every single race. I think we would have just really got complacent. And, and I know people say, you know, don't get complacent, don't get complacent. And I, and like, I don't think we would have got complacent on purpose, but you know, you know, you're, you're really bugging and you just got to do that little bit extra and you're like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. You know, that, that type of thing. And then all of a sudden all those little things can add up into something quite large. Um, and I think we never took that off. We never took a foot off the accelerator. Um, and even some of the first races, like in that 2012 year, were pretty close. Um, you know, you had the Canadians that came back. They went hard. Um, like the French came back into it. They were going quick. Like the Aussies actually before that were going fast uh, at Munich. They got third in Munich behind like us and the French. So, of course, they were going well. So everybody had basically taken and gone, okay, I used to be super, super competitive. And I think actually some better rowers came back into the boat. Uh, like uh, yeah. had an opportunity to say, man, well, we weren't going to before. We've probably definitely now got a medal. Um, and if not, we'll try and still knock the Kiwis off. But in terms of like, if you, if you want to find an Olympic like silver medal, because you're like, I don't think we can beat so-and-so, but I'm pretty sure we can get second. You're going to go down in history with some Olympic medals. And it doesn't matter if it's gold, silver or bronze. You know, gold's the best, but still winning the Olympic medal is history making. Um, I definitely think that we got quite a few people coming back to just like make that happen. Um, and so you yeah, got it, you got slightly easier with in terms of pressure, but then the whole dynamic of everyone else now who was different that we hadn't raced before, you were like, okay, well, we know the French will out and, you know, but the Aussies, they're not too bad, you know, and so you'd have to start thinking like a lot differently about more people rather than what happened was for like probably that two year period, it was just us and GB. <laughs> And we would know that we were going to be like miles in front of everybody else. And so we didn't, where all the race was, was about us two, not anybody else. So I think it just opened it up to more people. And it probably the difference between the winners and everybody else closed up. Yeah, yeah. Um, on, on that spreadsheet, you've got, is is the stat your, you know, for all the races that you've done, the average time was sub 6.30? I think... Mate, I could go get my laptop. Um, I think our average time in all our races was like 6.25 or 6.26 or something for every yeah, single is, race. That's phenomenal, isn't it? Over, over uh, what, 60 races. odd races. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, what, 71, I think, I it ended up being. That's, that's an amazing stat. Well, yeah, well if you want, I, can, I can tell you the unofficial stat. Um, the unofficial stat is 98 and zero because we did um, like we would race a lot of the regattas here in New Zealand and then we had the Henley races and then we had we went to Hollenbecker a couple of times. So if you took all our international races like other regattas and yeah, yeah, our yeah. national stuff that we'd race as a squad, um, it was 98 and zero. So it's like, you know, you can't you don't really count those. But world, the world stuff was 69. The Cox pair, that's two on top, so it's 71. Um, yeah, I know. It, it's it's actually quite baffling in a way. And I like I remember saying to someone, um, I was doing a speech and we had some like Q&A and stuff afterwards, and they're like, man, you know, did you ever think you'd do that? And I was like, nah, because we just just went out every race to try and win a race. You know, when we started in the pair, it was like, cool, let's, let's, let's do the pair. We know we're pretty good. Let's try and win a race or let's just try and win the Worlds. You know, like... Because you don't yeah. have to win. You don't have to win everything. I, you know, like knowing what we did was different. But before that, that wasn't my mentality. Like when we're in the four, we're like, okay, let's. We're going to get top three to go to the semi. We're going to get top three to be in the final, and then we'll take it from there. But it's not like we're going to win today. And that was probably because it's a little bit of an experience and stuff like that. Ultimately, you're trying to win, but in the back of your mind, you know that if it's not going well that day, you've yeah. still got to make this period. Um, and so that was still the mentality of the pair, for, like the first year and then the second year in 2010. And then in third year, it just changed again. It's like, right, we're just going to try and win like every time. Um, and then like 
2012 came around that winter and then all of a sudden you're like you know you've won more than anyone else and it's like oh well, <laughs> they're not slow down now um <laughs> you know and so that did play on our minds a little bit but it wasn't like we would go and the one thing was we never went out to a race going i hope we don't lose today you know you basically just had to get the mindset in of because if you're if you're getting defensive you're not on the attack and so we had to be on the attack every single time you know and we knew people were going to attack and so we just had to make sure because of all the foundation that we were going to be able to just push it better than anybody else. Um, and that was it. Yeah. Um, over, over all those races, did you actually get quicker up until 2016? I know you, you've talked about, you know, being in peak form in 2014, but did the pair get quicker? Because I guess one reason is, you know, I'm, I'm looking at Rio and I'm thinking I'm, I'm surprised – in one way that you did have third more slowest deep. race in history and in, in our history so out of those 69 that rio final was the third slowest wow yeah That's so and that and that that gives you an idea like for people that can't quite remember it that it was that rough like we just broke seven minutes there was only two other occasions in all our heat semis everything that we, we didn't break seven minutes and this yeah. is the final of the olympic games and we went seven minutes like you know like it's it's 40 seconds probably where it less than it should have been you know instead of doing 140s down the course we're like struggling to hit 150s you know which at at full speed and anyone that's training like in a four, like you know in a four that their coach is going right we want to be training tagging along like sub 140s and you're not even hitting like 10 times that like or, or like 10 seconds quicker than that slower than that at full speed that sort of just shows you how slow that regatta was yeah did so we were you cautious in that final were you um oh yeah yeah mate didn't want to fall out <laughs> that was probably that was one that there's only been a couple of times and because i steered our boat from the bow um there was only or oh, maybe two occasions in our whole time where we've ever hit boys I've like on my steering, like I'm a demon. Like if I'm steering, mate, I, I could have no boys and, and I'd be straight as. Because I steered like our whole time, even when we were in the four and three seat, I steered because I was like just bang, I could get it. I was mate, mate, I'm if you if anyone wants a steer, right, like mate, come and find me. I'm sure you need them on the teams. Um, you know, and, and that was it. And so we hit boys shit in the third five hundred quite hard with that wind coming across. And the boat, the stern was actually pushing around. So I was fighting against it. And of course, I'm in the bow. So it's going to stroke side. So like Hamish is having to put the gas and I'm trying to steer against myself while tempering my speed, you know. So otherwise, you're going to zigzag all over the course and you're full tip in the final of the Olympic Games. So in the end, we actually ended up rowing it like onto the boys on Bondi's side. And I just had to like take some off so that he could pull it back. And it wasn't until those markers on the like last 500 came in that you got back in the line and you could actually just keep it going. And I think that's like how the Italians came through the palms, like in the pier, and the South Africans came back from bloody being out of the race, was because I think once everyone just got out of that wind, they just went, oh, well, got nothing to lose, bang, and they went for it. Um, you know, and people that had battled through the middle, I think British must have probably just been a bit tense and bits and pieces, and, and they had no response, you know, to the guys that just battled, battled, battled got there without like being too tense i like i reckon that was probably the the difference to be honest yeah looking back on it you know that that time you did in the heat in london of, of 608 um which is phenomenal i mean i guess you got you got close to that but i mean what was it about that race that produced that time oh, i i don't know um okay so in terms of mentality I knew we were going fast, okay? So what we learned from our, our time in the pier was we knew how fast we were going before we turned up. You know, you do your three-day out pieces, whether it's a K or whatever. So we were training in Argery uh, before London, and we went down to Lucerne, and we did a time trial, like, against our against the double, against the women's quad. We had a six-second head start on the double, um, uh, lightweight, no, sorry, it was with the lightweight double that year with Pete and Storm that ended up getting bronze, yeah. and yeah, we yeah. went off together, and we put we put probably a length and a half on them at the finish, and so of course time wise that's still four seconds quicker. It's probably a, like a percent and a half 
up quicker than them. Dead flat Lucerne, and we just dipped under 617. Whoa. So I knew we were going fast. Like like dead, like Lucerne glass conditions. Yeah, yeah. And it was on the course, you know, like they had a couple of lanes out, bang, and, they, and the coaches did it. We had the GPS, everything, like 616.8 or something. And I was like, fuck, it's quick. Um, and, of course, so when we turned up to London, we hadn't raced anyone because the World Cups just seemed like there was quite a big distance that year between the World Cups. So, of course, we hadn't raced uh, any, like, except our, like, lightweights and, like, our women's quad and stuff that we paced against. Um, we hadn't raced anyone. So the same mentality came through, and I remember getting on the water to Bondi, and we did some warm-up pieces down wind, and he's like, mate, that's flying. And I just said, like, we need to have a good push today. Like, never, we never even spoke about, like, the time, the record. Um, and I just said, like, we've just got to have a good push today. We got We can't just back off. You know, the wind's going to pick up, and if it's a little bit quick, we don't want to be hitting any water, so we'll just tap it along, get over the top of the waves. You know, if you take the pressure off and it goes a bit bubbly, then you're, like, you're pissed off with how you rate. And so French shot out, and we knew we had to pass them, like, 600s, our big move, bang, we went through. Um, and then all of a sudden, we just kept the gas on, and we just tapped it along. Like, we didn't raise the rate, but we just didn't slow down. Um, and so we just tapped it along. So whatever speed we did through, like, the second third and fourth, like I think, what did we do? We went through like just over 303 and then we finished at 608. So there's like less than a second fade between that first and second uh, thousand. And it was literally, we just tagged along and we got to the finish and I was like, mate, that was awesome. That was quick, you know? And um, and I said to Bondi, oh mate, you know, how fast was it? And he goes, oh shit, I forgot to start the speed coach. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and, and so at the end it was like, oh, and so I said, and he goes, oh, I can't have been that fast. I saw some like, 136s through the middle and so like whatever you know so i never really thought it was that fast and it wasn't until we literally like got off the water and everyone's like coming down to the pontoon and like i i think like john christophe and stuff were there and people just going well done that was amazing and we're like going what and then like they go oh you broke the world record it's like 608 and like matthias uh, valenga from the dutch team yeah um that we used to race against in the four he just came down like big hug going man that was amazing and we were just like, fuck, like just unbelievable because it, we've just done, we just gone out to have a really good push. And because probably we didn't have that pressure, you know, well, we didn't get tense. We just tapped it along, tapped it along. So like I knew we were quick, but I just didn't know how fast because we we didn't have the perfect conditions. And they could have probably been a little bit stronger, but maybe, maybe we just timed it and it just had the perfect breeze coming down fast, you know, for our boat. You know, we're in lane five. It was just perfect enough to like give us that push, um, and you know, and that and that's what happens because you don't set world records like any other time than when you have those normally really intense races. Like it's been a few occasions, but not many, um, and everyone's just like pumping along because there's like a huge screaming tailwind. Like whether you're in Bulgaria or like um, uh, like Lucerne, when that wind howls through there, like you're just going fuck, like, tents are just about to blow off, and you're just watching the boats going phew, like because it's so fast. But I didn't think London was that. So, you know, we were a little bit like Drew in the pair. And I like, I'm, I'm sure he's probably, I don't know if you've ever had a good chat to him. Like, they used to think that 610 was their magical number. And I felt probably about the same. So I always thought, you know, uh, you know 614, because we got close a couple of times, you know, and you can do thousands in there, sort of 304. And you're like going, oh, you know, should if we strung two or three, like two of those together, after doing two or three of them, you'd be like, man, we could go pretty close. But you'd not, you, you're you always thinking that you were going to always slow down that sort of four or five seconds between the first and second K. Um, and just so happened, like with our training and everything that we had been doing, which allowed us to just even split it. Then all of a sudden, we even split perfect conditions, 608. It's like far out. Amazing. So like, yeah. could, could we have gone faster? I don't know. Possibly. I reckon in Amsterdam, we could have gone faster if we didn't race the Cox Pier. Um, because that was probably the only time that I felt really vulnerable in the pair. So we, I like, in terms of like how we raced, because I would know from these pieces and I generally have the confidence to say, mate, you know, we did really good 1500 the other day. It was quick, you know, it's sitting on 97%, you know, yeah, okay, we're, we're 10 days out from like a World Cup or whatever, or even World Champs. You just, you just know you were going well. Um, but on the morning of the final for the pair, which was the last of six races, I think it was five races or whatever, um, 
like I remember biking down to the lake, just going, oh, my legs are so heavy. They feel like the day they felt like the day after like the world champs, where you're just like, man, I've just you know I can still feel what happened yesterday, um, and and because we were just like we had the same mentality, and maybe we shouldn't have, you know, in terms of when we raced like the pair and the Cox pair, we just had that we go a hundred the whole way, whereas we probably should have backed off, like even in the heat of the Cox pair, we won by a mile, and then the final we just romped it, and then of course even in the semi of the like in the pair. We still romp that again, you know. So it was sort of like we maybe we should have backed off, but that was just not what we did. Um, and of course, so when we we're in that final, you know, and I was like, okay. And I remember saying to Hamish because he was like, "Man, my legs are heavy," and we were doing the warm up, and I was like, "Man, they just don't have the same sting like our big bike warm up that we were doing." And um, and then all of a sudden, like we we're in the race, and I was like, "Look, they're going to get out in front of us. Just we're going to come back through. We just got to make. We just divide our time like we normally do." Um, and lo and behold, you know, like shit, we last going through five hundred or something. It's like oh, Eric, man. it sounds it sounds gone a little bit. How's that? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I'll just make sure it clicks in. So, like in that race, we went through like the five hundred behind, um, and then of course we get to the thousand, and we've only just gone past, and then we just put the foot down. But it was a really sort of slow first K, and we could just never make that speed up. Um, and so, you know, we went across in 609. I definitely think it was quicker than 609, just because that course is just so, the wind when it funnels down there, same thing. If you get it at the right condition, it doesn't get too choppy in that last two feet. Um, and like, that's basically what happened with us. I think we, we had it there, but we were just too tired. You know, like we just weren't, we didn't have that. If we'd had the same, if we'd just been there to the pier, I think we would have rode away and maybe gone six, seven, maybe six, six. Um, just because, well, just because of like the conditions that it, that it was. Um, mm. But I definitely think because that year we were rowing really well. You know, there's been over our time. <clears throat> I look back and there's and there's one. I'll tell you, there's one video I want you to go watch after this. Our final in the Hamburg World Cup in 2011. Yeah, I reckon there's a piece just after the 500 and they zoom in on us. I reckon we're rowing really well. I reckon that was that 2011 year we rode really, really well. Um, just a different thought process and a different mindset into how it was happening. Um, and then again in 2015. So it sort of seemed like that year before the Olympics, we were like, we were ready to go. Um, you know, that 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 win that we had in, in Hagbillet, you know, we win by like nine seconds or whatever the hell it is. And that was a good, they were good crews that we were racing against. And we just rode away. And I think, what did we do? Like 617 again, like flat mm -hmm. argery conditions. And yeah. it should never have been that fast, you know, like, and, but it just was. Um, so there was a few years, yeah, where I think we were doing it better than at others. Um, and those two, like, definitely spring to mind out of all of it. Yeah. Josh, Josh Butler's got a question there. Oh, um, Josh, mate. How are you? Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. What, what a damn pleasure for zoologists. Um, okay, so I reckon for anybody out there, <clears throat> a physiologist and a good physiologist is worth their weight in gold, you know, so a trainer and everybody's got them, you know, they do all the lactate tests and they do all the bits and pieces. They know how to like adapt your body. And so with Dan, he gave us, like he gave me workouts specific for my 2Ks and like my world record attempts that I was doing on the rower. Um, and it would be specific training. So, you know, like um, at certain wattage, like specific for certain lengths of time with small or large rests or whatever it was to be able to adapt your physiology for you to hit that certain target. And because he had all the data with us anyway for like what our U2, U1 levels and stuff were, he, you sort of know, you know, you know what is humanly possible for you. And so he could look at it and go, okay, this is your power at, at two millimole, four millimole, at full exertion and then just graph it and go, I reckon you're going to do this right here. Um, and so he basically did all our training programs with Noel um, right through. And so this is the other thing that probably uh, like anyone that's read our book will know in that period between 2012, so 2013, 14, 15, 16, we only rode on the water once a day. So everything wow. else was done on the ergs, um, on the bikes, you know, I was just monstering the erg. I was like smashing out huge Ks. We started throwing in the occasional afternoon row, but we would generally like maximum eight rows a week. 
max shit it was like the most um and so that was what he what it did is that we actually ended up doing more training so more specific heart rate focused training um than we did previously with dick but we did less rowing so what that meant was a we had to be really precise with what we were doing with rowing you didn't have time you know if things start going downhill you don't have a lot of time to get it back um and but at the same time we were like just pushing the physiology so you know we could sit on these hour rugs just monstering numbers heart rate just in training pace which meant when we we're out on the water in the pier our training pace you know where here's us trying to pace off women's eights and shit like that you know just to show our speed um and that was but we could you know and we could repeat it you know that was the best thing with us is you could repeat stuff um it wasn't just a one-off and that was what allowed us to do hard heat hard semi hard final you know all of that just kept combining into it now it's brutal as hell like it's really really difficult training it's um like because you're basically trying to punish your body like every single day um but if you're looking for that gold medal um it's a more scientific approach than what like tonks and like spracklin and all the people that you hear that just yeah. are doing like 300k weeks and shit like that um it's a more specific approach in terms of time training uh, at hard high intensity but in a better focus so that's probably what we found we were still training really hard like we had under the tonks regime um, but we were just doing it in a more scientific fashion 